students now we shall discuss about the land distribution in the city in the village of palampur the land distribution is actually distributed among all the members of the families but not equally the 450 families in that there are nearly one third of the families who come under the scheduled caste tribes and these people do not hold any land and 240 families hold two acres or less than two acres of land where it is very difficult for them to get at least to meet their daily requirements and the 60 families hold a very large from 10 acres to more than 10 acres starting from two acres of land and these people come under medium and large scale farm laborers or the families who hold large lands so 80 percentage of the entire land which is present in the Palampur village is controlled by 60 families whereas 240 families are actually accommodating only 20 percentage of the land which is being utilized for agriculture and after moving on from this side land we also will discuss about the labor the labor who will supply the labor labor as I mentioned earlier there are two types of labor one is a physical the other one is a, sorry skilled and the manual labor here we are discussing about the manual labor in the manual labor we have certain basic problems for them the basic problems for them are basing on their wages some people though government has fixed certain amount of wages for them like 50 to 60 rupees per day but still they are paid 35 to 40 rupees only and in return they cannot ask the person who is paying the amount less for them because they are bound by various restrictions within the village one such restriction is the duration the competition what they have between the people those who do not have any work so obviously if you do not get any work you may not even get that 30 to 35 rupees or 40 rupees also so you have to struggle with uh, starvation now moving on sometimes for the labor they also provide meals while the duration of the employment is not at all guaranteed it is not guaranteed even along whole along the season of the crop because some will be hired only for sowing the seeds while some will be hired only for cutting down of the sugarcane crop so like this they are hired for a particular tasks so there is no guarantee of employment at all for the fixed tenure so next the wages the duration the heavy competition these all makes the life of the labor a very tough and difficult situation now moving on to the other basic factor what we need to concentrate is the capital needs as we mentioned earlier the cost of the cropping of farming has increased many a times when compared to the traditional type to the green revolutionary type now in many areas they are following the green revolution techniques so the cost of production has increased a lot there they used to use the natural manures cow dungs with the traditional seeds less amount of water this all were at very less cost whereas nowadays we are using high yielding variety of seeds which you need to buy them from the market which is a heavy competition for them then you need to get your pesticides fertilizers and also you need to get huge amount of water so that you need bore wells machinery setup and everything so all these together you need lot of investment towards your crop so the capital needs of these investments are not addressed by any government any bank do not provide loan for them because agriculture is an unstable industry so the 60 medium and the large scale farmer families who are living here these families hold large pieces of land and they try to give certain amount of loan for the small and the medium farmers who are actually struggling with the financial crisis in return they collect heavy interest and also force them to work in their fields for very less wages and at the end the conclusion is that they have to sell whatever they produce at very less cost than the market to them to pay back their financial debts so all these things are the capital needs the farmers of the rich families or the large holding families 
actually do financial business also so in this way they create more and more interest they do adapt on the, the people those who are in requirement so they encash the need of the people and force them to take for high rate of interest and finally get them in trouble and later sometimes they occupy that lands or sometimes they force the people to sell that particular land to them so like this many of the farming families are losing their small small holdings of their lands and turning as landless farmers or landless laborers now after this the sale of the surplus farm as we mentioned earlier the families are very few who have two acres of land these 60 families only hold major amount of the land so we are talking about the farm production which is surplus is only possible for these 60 families whereas it is not possible for the rest of the people because their production is very less because their lands are very less so when we talk about this we have an example of tejpal where who holds he holds a large land so the production output what he has is in large so he will try to sell that one in the market and the extra income what he is getting he would like to invest it in the paying of the machinery the tractors or sometimes he would like to save it for future requirements so this large holding land holding families will definitely have an edge over the small holding farmers which will result in that these small holding farmers do not have any financial reserves left out for the next cropping whereas the large farm holding families will definitely have large amount of resource what they hold for the future requirements that results in for them to get more and more amount of the requirement so when they have reserves left out for them they are stress free tension free and then this amount only they use to give for interest and make the people to work for very less wages so all everything is rotating among the surplus production what they have these 60 families only take away the hands of the small farmers by giving them money for very high rate of interest ask them to work for very less wages ultimately grabbing their lands when they fail to pay the interest or the amount back this is how the small farmers are losing their lands the large farmers are getting more and more lands so automatically when they get more land the production will increase again the surplus production they would reserve for the future needs again that production is getting added up so these people are getting richer and richer while they are becoming poor and poorer so that's how we have these factors affecting the day-to-day -day lives of the people in the farming activity of the village of palampur now we will discuss about the non-farming activities of palampur if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbsc syllabus